Hi, Chris. Welcome to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. Thanks, Melissa. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here. It's great to be here. So, Chris, you are in San Jose, right. California, and you are a health and fitness trainer. Yes. Yeah, I've been a, been a trainer for about uh, 17, 18 years. Yeah. It's been great. How did you get started? Well, so it's a fun story, actually. I was I graduated college in 2003, but before that, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was actually undecided. And uh, junior year, I tried out for the basketball team at, at school and didn't make it. But the coach said, hey, well, you and your buddy are good enough to at least practice with the team. So we got to practice with the team for a whole year. And at the end of the year, one of the players on the team actually got a scholar or not scholarship, but he got a contract to play semi-pro basketball in Europe. And I, I don't want to take anything away from this wow. player. He was a good player, but he wasn't, you know, LeBron James, Michael Jordan. He was good. But, I, you know, in my opinion, I was like, wow, OK, well, I guess there are more leagues I could I could maybe play. You know, I I felt like if I really worked at it, I could go play. So I hired a trainer and um, he kicked my butt for a year and a half and I got in great shape and I tried out for a few teams and didn't make them. But that was a very seamless and easy transition to becoming a trainer myself because I just I thought he was just living a great lifestyle and just being around fitness all the time just seemed like a really cool way to go. So since then, I have sort of got into different specialties. Um, my specialty now is helping people who want to get fit but have some back pain. So, you know, balance, core strength, flexibility, things like that. So that's my story. I know you've written a book about that and yeah. we'll get into that here in a minute. But before we do that, what are some lessons you've learned along the way? I think a huge lesson is to always keep learning. I think that would be one of the biggest ones to stay humble, to keep learning. You know, not that it's... I definitely feel like I do know a lot about a little, you know, I've gone very deep into this specific thing in fitness, but if I just go over one inch to the right or one inch to the left, so there's a whole new world. So I feel like everybody that I come across potentially has something that I could learn from and, um, and just staying humble enough and, and grounded enough to be able to see those opportunities as what they are, which is one of the reasons why I started my podcast. I wanted to keep learning. Yeah, and you have a tremendous podcast. It's Thanks. fantastic. It's called Health in the Real World. It's a video podcast, which, you know, might seem ironic, but that's the thing these <laughs> days. You can do video. There is audio. an audio version. There's an audio only version as well. So if you don't want to be distracted by the video, then you can just listen. <laughs> and I see you have a cleverly named YouTube site. It's YouTube and Yep. Flash your name afterwards. <laughs> so not really too cryptic about it. So you're right. easy to find. And there are tons of videos there on that site. So if anybody wants to get any kind of idea of who you are and what you offer, that's a great yeah, resource. Yeah. yeah, I've been on YouTube for a while. So let's yeah. Yeah. let's talk about sure. your book. Well, let's start with that book. You have I do have several books. I, I would say there's a couple that I'm really proud of, and there's a couple that I'm like, eh, could have done better. But uh, the big one is called Help I Threw Out My Back. That's the one that I wrote to help people get out of back pain. I, I was coming across the same type of individual with my, my fitness training. You know, I, I'm very into, again, flexibility, core strength, posture alignment. And so a lot of people who came to me who said, my doctor said, there's nothing wrong with me, but my back is killing me. Like it hurts so bad, you know, but the MRI, the x-ray, mm. they're clean, right? I'm, I'm perfect. Uh, the chiropractor did all that he or she could do. And I still have this pain. And, um, you know, in those cases, one or two, maybe three sessions into it, their back pain was significantly better just from very gentle stretches and exercises. Uh, and, and the reason why I preface all that with 
you know, the doctor said nothing was wrong because sometimes, sometimes something is wrong. Sometimes you do need to go to the doctor. Sometimes surgery is required. But um, in the cases where, you know, it's just like I sit too much and my neck gets stiff or, you know, I bent down to pick up a pen off the floor and my back kind of tweaked a little bit. In, in those cases, often you can greatly improve with just some simple exercises. That's fantastic. I herniated a disc about five years ago, and my chiropractor was a tremendous help, not only in getting the adjustments I needed, but in recommending the movements and the awesome. exercises. Yeah. Yeah, I still do those there. I would be a mess. Isn't it great how, them. you know, once you just remind your body just a little bit, you give it just a couple exercises, then it kind of remembers, oh, yeah, I know how to stand up straight. I know how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> the body it is, is amazing. It is. For sure. You know, I wish I had a great story about how I created that death, you know, <laughs> saving someone from a burning house or stopping a runaway bus with children on it or something. But the honest truth is, I think I was thinking socks <laughs> or something ridiculous. That's like a, that. very common. I herniated a disc when I was in eighth grade and all I was doing was stretching. I was standing up and I was bending down toward my toes. And as I came up, I thought somebody hit me with a baseball bat. And nobody was there, but yeah, same thing. It just, it was very, uh, mundane movements, right? Yeah. Yeah. You also have, um, help my diet sucks. That's, I like that one too. That's another one I'm very proud of. Um, the backstory behind that is that I realized that there are a lot of diets, you know, that come out. Keto's huge right now. Paleo's been big. Atkins diet, raw vegan, you know, all these diets. And, you know, some components of each diet maybe work for different people in different ways. So I didn't want to write an actual diet book like this is what you need to eat. It was, uh, it was a checklist. I just made a checklist. So if you, so right now at this moment, Melissa, if you do not drink, uh, I say a gallon a day because it's like it's a lofty goal. It's actually double what they rec what they recommend you drink. But uh, in the summertime, I think even for like a five foot female, a gallon is realistic. Um, but I say drink a gallon of water a day and stay on level one until you've mastered that habit. And then once you've mastered that, OK, cool. Now you can turn the page and get to the next habit. And that's to make a green drink every day to basically drink your vegetables. So it's progressive like that. It's, you don't have to eat the whole elephant. There are seven steps and don't get, don't go to the next one until you've mastered this one. I love that. So it's helping to build sustainable right. and healthy habits. And even if you only hit three or four out of the seven, you're going to be in pretty good shape. That's probably three or four more exactly. than before. <laughs> so that's progress. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I hear healthy, sustainable habits are it's, just nice. It's really it. Like there's so many different theories out there of what's the best way to work out, what's the best way to eat. Again, there's validity in many of them, if not all of the big ones. Um, but it's how can you actually apply them to your own individual life? I think that's what's very important. Yeah. And somebody told me once, or it was probably written somewhere, that the best exercise is the one that you're right, going to do consistently. Right, right, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I know sometimes it's so easy to get hung up on the all or nothing traps. Like I will think about, okay, I have to have all of these vegetables, this many legumes, and whole grains. And all of these things, and it gets so overwhelming, and it's it's just easier to go right. grab something. But overcoming that all-or-nothing mindset would be doable with a book like you've mentioned, where it's just pick out one thing. Yeah, and yeah, I agree. It's um, and we can really only focus on one thing at a time, right? We, you know, they say ninety-five percent of our of our behavior on a day-to-day -day basis is habitual, so. I think right before I wrote this book, I thought, well, 
if that's true, then shouldn't my goal be to develop a new habit? And like you said, if even if you develop one new habit, that's one more than you used to have. So let me work on developing one new habit. So hmm, if I could choose any healthy habit that I could develop, what would it be? And it was water. So that's why that was number one. Because, you know, if you're not drinking enough water, I don't care about your protein, your fat, your carbs, you know, fasting. It doesn't matter. Drink water. <laughs> you know, it's like, and then once water becomes automatic, and there are different time frames as far as how long it takes to develop a new habit. You know, some say like a week and or 21 days or three months or whatever. But I think it's up to the individual when you really feel like you have that habit down, then time to move on. I'd say that probably applies to a lot of other habits as well, right? Non, even non-health related habits. Probably. Then I got really interested in this one book, and then I read the subtitle, and I'm still interested, but in a different way. It says, Naked Fitness, <laughs> How to Get a Great Workout. <laughs> You're interested in a different way. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, that was a fun book to make. So I think this is also one of my top, I would say, four books. Um, well, I, I don't want to, like feel like I'm setting myself up for like I'm I'm talking smack about myself because all the books are good they're just different they're like different focuses so this is good we're diving into them naked fitness is very practical so um, I think there are 68 exercises in there plus some some ways that if you wanted to transition from using weights or being very reliant on weights and then moving into more of a body weight um, and body weights not just push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, and squats. You know, it, there are other concepts about how to drive tension into the muscles. And these concepts are also very good for rehabilitating. Let's say like you hurt your shoulder or something um, and you want to go move it again and you need to be able to produce tension in those muscles in a certain way before you can move your shoulder in a healthy way um, to do, you know, a harder exercise. So uh, yeah, naked fitness is fun. There's a lot of pictures, not those pictures, but you know, like you said, people, me doing exercises without equipment. You know, it's funny that you said shoulder because I've had a wonky upper arm, I guess. Technically it's not my shoulder joint, but the muscle in my upper arm. And again, I'd like to say it was from some heroic act when I was lifting something heavy off of someone to save their lives, but it's not. <laughs> I think it's due to the way I sleep and the way my arm hangs, but that muscle mm -hmm. is sore and it really drives me crazy. Mm. I would be happy to help you with that. Uh, Cause I think the body should be able to sleep on its side, right? Like it, it's a, but it, but it is sort of like you need to warm up in order to get into a, like a workout. Uh, same kind of thing with, you know, sleeping even. Like if you're going to sleep on your shoulder for, let's say, three hours a night, you got to make sure there's some like, we call it structural integrity in the joint and it's not going to like slip out of position or over tighten. But, um, yeah, we can <laughs> give you some, some classes, some shoulder workouts. I tell you, what I hear you saying is that I got to do a workout so I can sleep at night. And that just sounds... <laughs> I know. It's... Uh, I know. <laughs> it's, well, I know. It's crazy, right? I, I, a lot of people, though, come in for shoulders because we... I would say that's like the mo that's like the major joint that we don't use enough. Because mm -hmm. even if you don't work out, you still use your hips, your knees, your ankles because you're walking around. But when was the last time you raised your hands all the way up overhead, right? A lot of people will hurt themselves just doing that. And the body functions on a use it or lose it principle. And it's, you could call the body lazy. I, I prefer um, optimize. <laughs> <laughs> It'll optimize, right? So it, if it doesn't need to build muscle in a certain area, it won't. And it'll use those resources for something else. So um, yeah, once we hit about, it's younger than people say, I think the aging process starts pretty young, like 20 to 25 years old. 
uh, once we hit that, it's not automatic. Like when we were kids, we were like 10 years old and we could just do whatever we wanted. Nope. <laughs> well, I will be on the watch then when I hit 25 to make sure I'm incorporating healthy right. habits. So moving on, let's not <laughs> do any math or anything there. Uh, so you also have a book called Back to Basics. Yes. That one, if anyone's watching this, don't buy that book. That one sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, that one, uh, I, it was never actually designed to be for sale online, but I, Amazon has a really cool program, and that's how I made these books. It's called KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. And I made that book to give to my new clients. Nice. Just as like a here, this is about me. This is about the program. This is what it's like. It's only like twelve pages long, and it's not designed to really stand by itself. It's designed to function in conjunction with the workout program. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. And then I see you also yeah. have a workbook there for a twelve month or a year long. Yeah, goals uh, tracker. Yeah. For those of us who don't use smartphones or <laughs> want to write stuff out, yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, the reason why this is kind of a fun story, uh, my friend and client and she's coached me, uh, Katie Pavrell. She's, um, she has a company called your insight edge. She would be a great guest for your podcast. And I originally hired her when I was training for basketball teams, when I was trying out. So this is like 2004, maybe, and she was doing like hypnosis, like visualization and hypnosis. And so I would visualize all the scenarios on the basketball court and what might happen and how I would respond and, you know, building up confidence and things like that. And it's oh, incredibly powerful. And then after I decided not to pursue basketball anymore, then we started working together for business strategy and things like that. So now, currently, we sort of have like a mastermind. We meet every week and encourage each other with each other's projects. And a couple of years ago, both of us were in the same spot. She had just written a book. I had just written that help. I threw out my back book, but we had both stagnated. And we were we were saying like, gosh, I, I feel like I have like 15 books inside of my brain, but I just can't get them out. And we made a little bet with each other. And... Basically, we had to produce a product every single wow. month. And we did this for 15 or so months. Um, it didn't have to be like this huge thing, just anything that you could put online that uh, that you could sell without you being there. So like a book on Amazon or whatever. Um, she did a lot of audio recordings. And the the reason why it worked, I think, is because the punishment was if you didn't finish it in the month, you had to donate $100 to a politician who you didn't <laughs> like or didn't agree with. <laughs> and I won't tell you who either of our politicians were because I don't want to get political, but <laughs> it was pretty funny. That's hilarious. Um, it worked. It definitely worked. So that's why I have a bunch of content as far as books and downloads and stuff I like that. I love so. that. I may steal that. Yeah. I'll always give you credit. <laughs> definitely <laughs> do it. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> now, I see that you probably have your own built-in fitness program because you are the father of four kids under 10. <laughs> yes. Yes. Built-in fitness program. I actually jump. I did a jump rope class with my son the other day. He's 10. And um, yeah, I have a... Sorry. I, hopefully that's not too loud in the background. I had to open the window because it was just burning in here and there's loud motorcycle outside but yeah my son's 10 i have three daughters who are uh eight six and three and uh yep built-in fitness program dad's always going <laughs> running around at the park it's might be enough. less expensive to go to a gym or to hire a personal trainer <laughs> but hey whatever works right yeah, I could hire the best personal trainer in the world and still save money. <laughs> so, Chris, if anyone wants to connect with you, they can find you on YouTube. They can reach out to you on the website and, of course, buy your books, except for the one you don't want them to buy, of course. But... <laughs> Just that one. That's the only one. All the other ones are cool. You could buy them. 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, the podcast is probably a really good way to start too, because it's a conversation like what you and I are having now. And I bring on a different guest each time to talk about a different aspect of health and wellness. And it it it, it bleeds into all areas of life too, because I even have had a few financial people. I've had um, you know a lot of mental health practitioners come on, doctors, acupuncture, mm-hmm. chiropractor, massage therapists, personal trainers, professional athletes. So it's been a lot of fun doing that podcast. Yeah. So before yeah. we close, what would be three pearls of wisdom that you would like to share with folks? Three pearls of wisdom. This is a good question. And this is, I guess I feel the way that my guests must feel at the end of the show when I put them on the spot with this. But this is a great question because I think one thing... All right, I, I would say I would put this at by far number one, especially now with all the, there's a lot of political turmoil and fighting and social media does not make things better. Uh, remember that we deep down in the way that we function and our needs and how, I would just say our needs, we are all the same. We have certain needs and what is different is how we go about meeting those needs. Some people value security and some people value um, independence and some people value, you know, there's all these different values and based on your particular combination of values, you're going to fall in a certain maybe political camp or you're going to live in a certain neighborhood or you're going to live in a certain part of the country. And I would just, just encourage everybody to remember that, that, it really doesn't matter what you believe politically or anything else because it's all that is just a function of what's deeper. And um, so that'd be number one. We're all, we're all in a sense, the same in that regard. Um, two, this life is a start. This, you know, don't take it too personally. I think we are spirits just kind of inhabiting this earth suit for a temporary time. And eventually we'll unzip the earth suit and move on to wherever we go. You know, nobody knows for sure, but, you know, that's what faith and belief are all about. Um, And I'm not espousing necessarily a, a specific religion, but, you know, just remembering that, like, your time on this planet is very short and um, the time you're going to be dead is going to be a lot longer. So like take advantage of where you are now. Uh, and then third, like try to as much as possible live in accordance with your own personal values. Mm-hmm. Like there are a lot of values that, that do get instilled in us from society and from our family. But at a certain point we have to decide like, this is who I am. And again, you mentioned I have four kids. I can tell you they come out of, they come into the world themselves. Like all four of my kids are the exact same as they were when they were born. The day they were born, their little personalities are there and they are so different. And you and I and everyone listening and watching have their own unique personalities and interests and values. And it's hard. This is probably one of the hardest things to do is to actually be yourself because we're looking everywhere else to copy people and, you know, motivational speakers and we're, we're, we're copying people. And what we really want to do is, I mean, if you're going to copy anyone, copy who you are, copy yourself. Right. So I guess those would be the three pearls. Thank you, Chris. That's great stuff. Really appreciate it. So again, Chris Jenke, if you want to follow him on YouTube or his website, those links will be in the show notes. And Chris, thanks for being on the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. Thank you, Melissa, so much. This is a great show. And remember, you and you are on my podcast. You're actually coming up next yeah. week. But yeah. uh, So check that out, too. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah.